Hello everyone, it's Dmitry Anoshin and Surfalytics. This is our fifth lesson of my course Getting Started with Analytics and Data Engineering. And we are wrapping our model two. And today's lesson will be about visualization elements for database. Previous lessons we learn about databases, we learn about SQL or SQL, whatever you like. And uh, today we will learn about how you can visualize the data then you query from database. And by the way, this is probably the most popular task for BI engineers or BI developers, data analysts, even analytics engineers and data engineers. They're working with um, databases, they're querying uh, databases, and somehow they need to communicate with the stakeholders. They need to build the dashboard, so they need to look to the some kind of time series data, and data visualization is the best ways to do so. And in the next model, we will learn about BI tools and what's BI server, what the duty is, what's uh, common use case, and the most popular tools. And today, we'll a bit of time uh, trying to touch this topic, and you will have one hands-on projects to actually trying to build simple analytic solutions. You can use local database, you can use cloud database. I will use the cloud database. I will show you example for AWS and Azure. You can try Google Cloud as well, all very similar. And I will show you a couple options for BI tools. Your idea will be simple. Assuming you will take Superstore dataset, you will put this in database, so it's already in database from previous lessons. And then you can trying to build couple dashboards, trying to visualize the same, what you did in the model one with the spreadsheets, either Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. By the way, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to actually participate in the projects that we're doing every week uh, to learn hands-on, what does it mean to be data engineer or analytics engineer or BI engineer, or you want to enhance your existing career or just start from scratch, uh, you can try join for trial to our community. Uh, where we practicing interviews, we practicing soft skills, we practicing uh, doing hands-on projects and better understand the requirements for the hiring manager and how actually get the job, not just learning simple commands, click, 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 and you get a ready solution about understanding. We actually understand what's happening under hood. And with this knowledge and fundamental knowledge, you actually understand how to learn, how to build your resume and how to apply for the job. And eventually, if you get the offer, you actually know what expectations on the other side and how to do that job. Let's get started. Assuming you, we already have the database either in the cloud or on your local machine, if it's a local machine, it makes sure that this database will be available from, from the internet or otherwise you only allow to use any resources on your local machine. For example, if you want to keep your database on local machine or you want to leverage the Docker container with Postgres database, then you probably can install any BI tools locally. And I will show you a couple of options that you can install locally, even some of them available in the Docker container. In my case, I assume I will use the database in the cloud. I will push data into this database and visualize. This is example what we have. We have database in the cloud. It has port, it has uh, host, we have firewall, uh, we have clients, either SQL or Excel on our local machine. And then we have a visualization tool, something like Tableau, Power BI, Metabase, Redash, and I will talk more about them. And we'll learn more about different BI tools in the future. Let's create quickly architecture. I'm using Drawio for this, and I also will brainstorm a bit later using Drawio from, from scratch. Assuming we have AWS VPC, we have our database in the public subnet. By default, uh, our VPC attached to internet gateway, and this is how we can connect to the DB viewer. For example, we might decide, okay, we want to create some visuals. And here I have a couple examples. There is one of the Google Data Studio that I think is now is uh, Google Looker Data Studio. And another one is a uh, clip follow. Those two I used to work for the marking purpose. Uh, and it's nice to quick visualize their some kind of KPIs and put them on monitor. Let's talk over one of the example I had in the past. For example, I used to work in the marketing department and the marketing department launching mobile application. Before they had their product, 
uh, for desktop, they have their website, but they decide, okay, we should go with mobile, mobile application for our customers. And uh, they want to measure different kinds of metrics. The first question you might ask, what kind of metrics they want to measure? And I will tell you later what kind of metrics and what's the source and ideas around the metrics. Because to having the data is not enough. Data should be uh, insightful. And to make data insightful, we need to make sure that we can define the right metrics. And those metrics can tell us the story, not just vanity metrics. In this case, company launched the mobile application. The first thing, uh, the company implemented the trackers, similar, for example, to Google Analytics on the websites, but different kinds of trackers inside mobile application that can have all the data and this data available in the in, uh, application itself. And my goal was as analyst to extract this data. For iOS, it was one tool. For Android, it was another tool. And also we use some third party services that can show us ranking and some other insights for mobile applications and marketplaces. And also financial data was in the different place. Before starting analyze the data, we should consolidate all data together. And in my case, I assume it was the sources and I bring the data in central database where I can build some kind of dashboards and visualization. My step one was just from source to target. I extract the data and upload this data in database. And this work, not exactly data and list work. This work is more about for analytics engineer or data engineer. But at Surfalytics, uh, what I'm trying to teach you that there is no direct boundaries between the roles. Obviously, the more you know, uh, the more competitive you are and the better your position during interview. If you will tell, you know, I data analyst, I can query the data, I can build the dashboards, but I don't know how to create the data. It sounds like fail. So that's why I'm trying to give you all information that might help to your career. And we will have lots of different hands-on and we should de decide what kind of database we want to use. In my case, I use AWS database. And then we want to decide what kind of tool and services we want to use for data visualization. And how this particular example work, and it was 2014. Now I think it's even harder because in the past, I didn't have big choice what actually use. And my choice was quite limited. AWS already had Redshift database and I think Azure and GCP was pretty young and uh, Tableau was quite popular. So what I did, assuming the mobile application uh, writes the data and generates the data and we're using adjust as a tracker, as a similar to Google Analytics. Um, and I was able to, not myself, but the DevOps person was able to set up integration from adjust to local MySQL database. And then we also had Adobe FTP because we have Adobe trackers. I think it was Adobe Site Catalyst and it had some data from mobile application sending to Adobe. And Adobe had the option to schedule extract of CSV files into their SFTP server. And uh, if you know work with FTP or SFTP, it's basically like Google Drive. But in, in the past, we didn't have any shared folders and company organization using FTP and SFTP. SFTP means it's secure and this was the right way to use. This is how it was. So I have the multiple sources of data and I moved the data into a Redshift database. Probably there were better cases to get the insights, but I was curious to actually try it Redshift and probably the first time I tried Redshift in production with the use case. And also the organization had their own on-premise uh, data warehouse where I can grab some extra data about the customers, their sales and transactions, in which and shift, and then use the Tableau to build the dashboard and create some nice visualizations and publish on our screen and sending it every day. We're coming to question too, because I'm talking about metrics, 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 how to decide what kind of metrics to use. One of the things that I'm trying to encourage everyone to do in Surfalytics is actually learn definitions of the metrics, because you can query the data and you can see, okay, I have this number of users or this number of events, but usually those metrics, they call it vanity metrics, they're not insightful. They doesn't tell you, okay, it's up and down, why? That's why it's better to focus on very good metrics. Some of them is ratio. For different industries and different domains, there are different metrics. And also there are specific frameworks 
that highlighted in this book, Lean Analytics. I recommend every student of Surfolytics to get this book either in library or get the PDF or buy on Amazon. I think on Amazon it costs. I had one, but I gave someone, never get it back. So this book uh, teach you about different frameworks, different industries, domains, and their key metrics. I think if you will learn just three domains about product marketing and key metrics, and you will add it into your resume and your experience. It doesn't matter what kind of role you're interested in, like data in general, analytics in general, even data scientists, data analysts. It definitely will, will be better for you. It will be your advantage, and especially then you'll talk with product manager or hiring manager. And what task we have? First, we need to understand the business requirements, right? For any kind of work, doesn't matter software engineering, data engineering, analytics, everything starts from business requirements and problem formulation. And if we define the business requirements, then we will come up to idea how to measure, right? We, we basically define the metrics, how we will go on to measure. And the second, we need to get some data. Ideally, this process calls backfill, then we can just extract the data from the source and push the data into our storage, where we consolidate all the data, all historical data. And only then we can think, okay, how we can do uh, set up incremental load or maybe we we'll just reload all data every day. There are like different options, and those options are available for data engineers, ETL developers, or even analytics engineers. And we'll learn about different tools and approaches. There are not many of them. Then you have initial data uh, in your data warehouse. Then you can also think about, okay, what kind of technology I want to use, what kind of stack I want to build. I would say, and we learned about this in mind map in the model one, that there are options available with commercial, uh, there is open source, and also I would say there is low code, no code applications for people who doesn't want to do anything with, hand, with code or hands on, and there is code application. Probably if you want to work in data field, it's good to know uh, how to make your hands dirty, how to at least SQL, you should know very well. This is like just, you have to know SQL very well. But in terms of Python, it's not really important in the early stage of your career because, as I said, many companies, doesn't matter, save their data, even terabytes of data, it's stored in data warehouse and data lake, lake house, and they have SQL interface. If you can query well, if you understand the domain and should be what kind of data should be extracted, then you probably will survive and you will have the time to learn Python later. This book suggests us different frameworks. Uh, the first framework is Lean Analytics Frameworks. I don't want to go into details. How does it work? The idea here depends on your requirements. You can choose different kinds of frameworks to build into your organization. And Lean Analytics, this book was written for startups. And you know, then startup is a small company. It doesn't have resources to big, big analytic solution, build the hundreds of reports. They want to define the key metrics, and they also call it like line on the sand, what kind of things they want to measure, what's matter for them the most. They give you idea of different frameworks. My personal favorite is Pirate Metrics. It's simple, it's clear, and this is how you can measure pretty anything. But they, they have the right different ones. And they talk about different frameworks, their pros and cons, and then they give you example for different industries. For my particular example with uh, mobile analytics, I use the Pirate Metrics. And why pirate metrics? Because it's like, or like the pirates. In this particular example, they have the terms like acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, and referral, right? Assuming you have mobile application, the first thing you care, you, you need to somehow get the users like acquisition. You can track how many users did you acquire every day, especially if you're spending money on the marketing, different campaign channels. You care about your acquisition, how many customers you, you bring to your mobile application or to your website and you can track this. The next thing is activation. It's basically the, then the users, they can sign up for your service and uh, maybe it's part of acquisition they sign up, maybe it's later, and then with option also they can sign up for the free trial, they can give you credit card, and then you can actually start talking about retention. The user already using this service, you can see how frequently the service is used, uh, what, what tier of subscription, how much money they pay and so on and so on, trying to see and learn from their behavior in your application. There is the revenue, how much money the user activity produce, you can see. And here in the revenue stage, 
they care about referral, right? Referral means if the user will share story about your mobile application, use referral code and bring uh, new customers into application. But there is another important uh, metric, for example, churn rate. The churn rate quite often asked during the interview, especially the, for analytics engineer, this is the company who stopped using the service and leave, right? So how you can measure the churn, how you can define. And here you're coming to one of the most complicated questions. What does mean active user? For many companies that I work for, I don't think that any company master this and can tell you with one sentence what does mean the active users the user who has like installed application the user who uses your application twice a day once a week it's actually not easy to, uh, question to answer and you can always have debate about how did you define active users for your company why do you think that it's important and so on they also mentioned about startup grow pyramid and everything starts from product market fit, especially you thinking, I want to start my own company. You can read Lean Analytics and Lean Startup book. The Lean Startup book teach you about a Lean Startup, how you can start the company and Lean Analytics, how you can measure because everyone understand the value of the analytics and everyone wants to be the data driven company. This is just example of a funnel. There are different ways and different visualization options, like how you want to present your data. And in Model 3, we'll learn about best practices for data visualizations and, and everything that related to, to this. This is another my example of the dashboard that I built for this particular use case. Then I have mobile applications and I use Clipfolio as example. Despite the fact that data coming from the different sources, I was able to plot all the data together. And because we just started the new application, we really care about how many installs we have for iOS, how many installs we have for Android, how many active users we have, and like also we compare. And also we care about what's the source of the traffic and how this traffic is compared day to day, month over month, week over month, and so on. To answer the question, what do you need to do to answer the business questions about the data that you have in your database, the obvious answer is business intelligence. So by business intelligence, I mean not something like big, big umbrella or big definition that you can find out in the Gartner or Forrester and we'll look what is it in the Model 3. But for me, just the set of the tools that help you to connect your source of data, it could be database, it could be even no SQL database, it could be some unstructured data, it could be CSV file, TXT file, doesn't matter what. You can connect this and without understanding uh, technical complexity, you can drag and drop. Uh, or if you developer, then you can build the interface framework for, for example, product managers, for sales managers, for business users to drag and drop elements and build the dashboard. And what we're going to do in this example, I encourage you to try to use Superstore dataset that you should upload into a cloud database. And then from this, you can connect any kind of visualization tool with the goal to rebuild, rebuild the dashboards that you built for Superstore. And your learning path should look like this. So you're starting with spreadsheet. You have some data about sales Superstore. You build some visuals kind of some dashboard in spreadsheet. And then you did the same using the SQL query. You probably mastered SQL enough. If not, you should practice SQL a lot. You should practice SQL every day because the SQL is the only currency that matter for data analyst role. And also it will unlock everything else for you for your future career. Now what I want to do, I want to brainstorm a bit with Drawer Right, so I can use the drawer and decide what we're gonna do. For example, we have there our file. We can say super superstore file. And what we want to do with superstore file, we want to put this in our database. And this process we can call we can call it um, ELT extract load and transform we can extracting data from here and we load data in database we we don't have any transform we just want to have one file and have one table here how to do this there is actually different ways 
and, and you should do this already in the past when we create the docker container when we create a docker container and launch the postgres we copy the files this there is also option to do insert there is also option to using tools like fivetran or similar or we will learn about more tools in the model 4 for data integration you also can use the python and chat gpt can help you a lot how to do this for example even you can try the python code if chat gpt and trying to point this to the cc file and load into the database as soon as you have your data in database the next thing you need to do you need to define and decide what kind of bi tool you want to connect you can use any service and assuming that this everything um, happen in the cloud so i can bring to back this thing happening in the cloud and this already looks like small business intelligence solution or you can call it data analytics solution the difference between this small solution and the big enterprise great level solution for the huge company that you probably will have lots of different data sources some sources uh, will have structured data like cc files or databases probably it's not coming from files it will coming from uh, databases and then you have some big storage and then you have bi tool for bi tools it's more or less all the same but if you have for example tableau then you need to learn how to manage tableau server and we on the model 3 we will actually will learn about tableau server and do some cool projects about this that's it about this and we're go going next i have here for example postgres uh, on azure and it already has the data you don't have azure or aws you can get to the free trio and here you can go to for example azure postgres sql servers you can create database and i think we already did this and then you can load the data we can search do they have power bi here and they have power bi embedded i never tried power bi embedded and i think it's not working in my account unfortunately i know that they have synapse inside synapse analytics they probably has the power bi maybe not but you can start just from power bi service or you can download um, the power bi desktop and connect and then you can push to the power bi service that's one thing um, another thing another popular service i think it was acquired by another company already i don't think they tell it here but that spot but the idea that this service the mode uh, allows you to connect to your database and then you can write the sql to query your data and it's also giving you opportunity to write i think in python in r you can query the data you can build some visuals and then you can save the dashboards and sharing insights so this is the service you don't host any infrastructure it's running for you and then but you should pay they they have the free trail so why not to try and you can add in resume another thing that i want to highlight about the mode so this is really nice they have really nice tutorial um, and they have different lessons starting from very simple things and then moving to like more complicated different keywords you can definitely practice this especially if you know work with sequels this is the good thing to finish and then they're moving to intermediate steps and they give their ui to practice it this is the open source bi tool metabase that you can get it from docker container and you can connect it locally just make sure that the ports is open and things they can connect each other and it has ui so you can query the data you can create visuals from visuals you can construct the dashboard and I work in the companies they using those in production they can attach to email server they can send information over email so it's it's quite convenient the similar thing is redash i think it was acquired by databricks and now available as a sql ui in databricks but idea is very simple um, and again you can write the queries and you can hook database write the queries and create the visuals and dashboards i think it's also available for the docker container and this example for aws here we talk about how you can create the database but here you can go with quick site uh, this is their service uh, bi service i bet they have the free trail 
The main idea of the BI, especially on the current level of our standing, that BI should be really intuitive. The step number one, always in BI, you connect to the data. The step number two, you should get list of your columns as uh, dimensions and measures, and then you can start drag and drop them, convert into visuals, and then you can try build something. Another thing that I want to highlight for you, the website SQL X. I used to learn the SQL in 2010, and I only, and you can see it has 190 exercises and probably one means complexity from one to four. It works um, in the way that you have the firm with computers and probably another one will have some slightly different complicated, but here you have table product, table laptop, printer, PC, some other things, so other examples, there are other tables, but here you can write the queries and you can run and execute it and it will tell you is it good or not and this is how you learn but the best thing about this that for every exercise or set of exercise you have the not the hamster you have the definition what is select and you look here and you can execute everything this everything you need is here you just need the practice and the sql or sql is not something you can learn over the week you need time to actually sync it to you the same with the python you can read a bunch of the books and by the way i prefer books over video tutorials or especially i had things like different like data camps there you have console and in this console you can you can enter your code click ok maybe you just copy paste your code and click run you don't understand how things works that's why you need, you need to fail a lot to better understand it and it just take times i think if you will just practice every day 30 minutes for the sequel you will be good like in a couple months you will be quite good with the python it's probably slightly longer but i suggest you don't mix python and sql together learn one thing first well and then maybe if you just starting to learn the one bi tool well they will talk about this on the model free and then understand some other concepts related to data analytics and um, a design of those solutions and then you can dive in into python we'll learn about the python as well and we'll do some hands-on and we are, we'll start using for example airflow for the python that's it for this lesson and don't forget that you need to do some some kind of exercise right you basically need to build something like this and you can do it on the local machine you can do it on cloud please try to not forget to use github because you should have github and everything you should commit to the github this is the kind of your portfolio the better you read me markdown files the easy to read and if it's screenshots the purpose and so on the better for you because some hiring managers coming like myself i coming to the person github and see how frequently commits what the person did and why and so on okay thank you and by the way for the model two i will also will add one more lesson uh, about uh, nosql databases because it's not requirement for data analysts to know and understand NoSQL database, but it's really beneficial to know actually how this thing works. And you shouldn't scare word NoSQL, so that's why I will show you the demo and I'll give you Docker container with MongoDB. You can try it, but usually use case like there is some backend for applications and for mobile applications or some different application could be a NoSQL database because it might be more suited for this kind of applications and workload. And then as a data engineer, you need to extract the data. And sometimes the data list, if you want to cross compare data in your report with uh, source data in NoSQL database like Mongo, MongoDB, then you probably need to know what, how you can extract the data from MongoDB and run like simple queries. That's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe.